sections is it so what are the three important sections that you people will be having one is your reading section the other one is your uh, critical reasoning session that is nothing but your short passages and then ultimately you will be having so sentence equivalence and text completion section see majorly like you have to uh, the word game or the lexical resource game it will happen on text completion and sentence equivalence that's the reason like before text completion and sentence equivalence we are starting off with the vocabularies because if you start uh, if you become strong with your lexical resources that part will become very easy for you okay so that is the reason we are start doing with this section first and uh, so when it comes to rcs and critical reasonings also to have the better understanding to perform well yeah obviously these words important because you will be getting all the scholarly um, this one i can say scholarly uh, uh, writings or scholarly uh, articles you will be getting they use n number of jargons different lexical resources high frequency words all these things to have that better understanding to have that satisfaction you people are understanding so what's required our lexical resources plays crucial role okay this note let us try to understand so like what is that first thing we need to do so if we are planning to understand and uh, have more words in your dictionary let me share the screen for you guys just give me a uh, this one moment all the handouts will be given to you guys okay Yes. Okay. So today our agenda would be prefixes, roots, and suffixes, and then we'll be studying about family words. Now let me tell you some of the facts here. What are the facts? Means every year minimum or at least thousand words will be included. Minimum, I am saying. So thousand words will be included in English language, and these words will be exclusively tested on GRE. Now you may be wondering, how come they can generate the words? So how come, like in language means it should be a limited thing, sir? The guys, let me tell you, language is not a limited thing; it is vast. That is the reason. So like. uh it takes years and years years and years to have the expertise on this language that means uh, like there is no subject which has any limitation it could be technical subject it could be your languages that means every year certain amount of words will be included in your english dictionary to be frank like when the first english dictionary was constructed it was just of uh, like around uh, uh, 30 to 40 pages dictionary it was then who gave the look the modern look to the dictionary was it was johnson okay so johnson was the person who actually uh, made that first elaborate your dictionary with 80 uh, books we had okay he included but how did he include those different words and everything miss he did lot of research he picked up language uh, words from different languages accumulated them used them translated them then added on and also he started uh, so considering the english language as a practical language so they started using the uh, the gestures also that was consider so that is how the birth of uh, like dictionaries everything came into existence so i told you so english language is extracted from different languages that means it has its sources from different languages you should be happy that even it has its sources from our languages also our native languages also but uh, predominantly 
so we have maximum words extracted from so latin and greek only so only if you can recall just you people get back to your school days or college days there are any terminologies in the bracket you would have so extracted from greek extracted from so your uh, this one, what is that? I can say Latin. So you would have seen those things, right? Yes, that is true. So basically, our words, English words, are extracted from these main resources. And also, how these words are constructed means we basically, in any word, we'll be having three important components. We may have three important components. What are those means? The first, it could be roots. Roots will be the main meaning of that particular uh, word. Prefixes means the words, the pieces, the syllable that is added before the roots. What is this prefix? The name itself says it. Pre. Pre means what? Before. Fixes means something added before okay so therefore so if a root is there so before the root if we add something so that we call it as what prefixes while what is suffix so something added post the roots so post the roots in the sense what after the roots will be adding something and that is called as your suffix okay so prefixes suffixes and roots so we need to know here why because you i guess uh, i guess many of you are engineers many of you are uh, on a technical part so you people know that if you want to build even a circuit or anything you need to have a building blocks right if you have the building blocks then only you people will be able to build the word just like that only so if you know these prefixes suffixes and roots meaning so very easily you people can build a word there so that means what so how we are getting so many words into english language today if you see we have thousands thousands millions of dictionaries there how did these millions of dictionary come into existence? They engineer the words. They produce the words by different combinations. Okay. If we crack that only, don't you think? So we, our life will become easier. So if you want to crack the GRE exam, that means if you know the building blocks, if you know the meanings of them, when you get the word, you can break them and see at least you, if not the exact meaning, you can guess the meaning of that word, is it? So therefore, I would like to say here, uh, we, we should not actually mug up all the words. Can you people mug up around 10,000 to 20,000 words? If you can mug up, it's well and good. But after mugging up, will you be able to remember which word should be used where? It is quite difficult, right? So if that is the case, then why we need to strain ourselves? See, if we are mugging up, we are mentally straining ourselves. Why we need to have this mental strain? Rather, if we understand this, what is that? This combinations. So if we understand rules, prefixes, suffixes, at least we can guess the meaning there. Because in GRE, for text completion and sentence equivalence, we will not be using, they won't be asking us direct meanings. That means they won't ask, what is the meaning of this X word Y? Okay, they will be just you need to use pick up the word so that is in contextual use. So, therefore, here we say that no mugging up. Okay, I to, uh, tell you guys don't mug up the words, remember the words. So, uh, give some kind of minomics so that you can remember them, understand bulky prefixes, roots, and suffixes. Uh, you people need to remember their meanings so that you can guess the words there. Okay, so now. Let me tell you what is this prefix, this one. See, here we have some of the words that I have given. Here we have some of the prefixes. I guess you people can see here. A, ak, ad, ap, ag, al, an, ap, as, at. 
so what does this meaning seems what does this prefix mean this prefix may mean a to your to word your near or in addition to or by so therefore so if you combine so these so what is that syllable i can call it as syllable the syllable meaning is this either to toward near so in addition to or by so if you see here aside aside means what next to isn't it aside is what next to accompany means what to join you that is addition to adjust is what so to uh, just you we are just adjusting nearby okay we are into aggression so that is also trying to say what is that aggression aggression is something in uh, what is that ag is the word and aggression is there so your like we have towards something we are showing our aggression towards something okay so that is aggression allocate so distribute it is so all these words are trying to give us what something so related to this only if you know these word meaning at least you can understand so some kind what exactly it is trying to say there now see ab and apps and apps it's not the apps that we make here like six uh, this one what is that uh, six pack no it's not that apps okay so app and apps is nothing but away from your off the topic okay either away from or off the topic absolve so and abrupt abrupt is just so something away from the topic it is not to the topic abrupt behavior that means it was not affected it, it was not expected behavior at that point of time absent is not present in that thing that means off the thing absolve is you are not able to solve that means off solving so that means it it cannot be done okay so that is the thing your b b is a verb again this is a prefix we can say on around over about excessively make cause or name or effect okay so that's what so if you see that all the words that has this meaning so it is here okay so let me take few more th things here bio or by bio or by means what life biography life writing graphy is writing so it is a biography is a writing of someone's life biology logy is study and bio is life see logy is also what study so bio is what life so life study it is called as biology so biometricism so metri is measurement so bio is self so self measurement or self recognition mission that is called as biometricism biome so bio is again life ohm is the pyramid so it's a biome biosphere sphere is round bio is this that is nothing but the sphere covering the life okay so that's what we basically have see how we have the words we have the words that is basically talking about the uh, means we get the, at least we can guess the meaning there capit and capt capit and capt is ed decapitate so that means to what is that to take out the head decapitate is to uh, what is that uh, just a release capital is investment so and for ed captain is a head caption is something very important okay so we are trying to give that cent is what hundred centennial century centipede peed is leg centi is a hundred so an organism having hundred legs we call it as centipede you people can see here how the things goes on deck and dine is suitable so decent decorate and dignity something dignity is what a suitable 
or uh, a res we call it as respectful but actually what why it is respectful because so the behavior the thing and all is with regards to the situation that is the reason we can take it as suitable so decorate is also what we are designing so so you can say decorate is like according to the situation one is doing that don is what give donate condone so ek is out of or outside so echo the voice that is coming from the outside that is called echo eclipse is what so you know ek is outside so something the uh, this one when when they're not in coincidence so we get this eclip ecliptic so that is so wide variety of resources from outside we are extracting the information that is eclectic okay so like this we have many words so you can see that in fact so in your handouts we have given the complete list of so words so that basically uh this one what is that uh, uh talk about uh, so these prefixes suffixes roots and uh everything okay so now for and first is what so it is speak if we see for and first it is nothing but you won't be even thinking of oh, for and first is something speaking yeah it is speak only fable fable is what a story a story with moral ideas fabulous is what you are expressing something to be very 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 good okay that means you are expressing speaking so it is what fabulous you are expressing there so fame is what someone who is very known or something which is uh, popular again this is a speak of the town famous is also same confess is what so you are uh agreeing or you are trying to feel uh guilt about your mistake that is confessing professing is what preaching or you giving the lecture so i'm professing now so that means i'm trying to uh educate someone so that is profess fur is what to bear to carry something fur is nothing but to bear or to carry what is this ferry we'll have small vehicles that carry us na? so uh, that is called as ferries okay it could be bus it could be vans that that carry uh, uh, people from one place to another we call it as ferry coniferous coniferous is what it's a forest why cone is so a forest that kind uh, contains the cone kind of uh this one a forest that carries the coney kind of uh, plants that is called as coniferous fertile so fertile that means bearing the land is able to bear it could be land also it could be anything the land can able to bear many things in it that means it can give birth to any, many things bear many things in the sense what it has a capacity to hold something so that is the reason fertile we say okay so defer is what to carry forward for is defer that means you are carrying forward so your admissions will get deferred so that is the thing info is what you are trying to carry or you are trying to release some idea from the uh, given information that is the thing we have and gam is what marriage what is gam you see that gam is nothing but marriage marriage in the sense what it could be bigamy monogamy polygamy so by by is two gamy is marriage two marriages mono is one so therefore it is uh this one what is that we can say a single marriage poly is what many so many gamy is what so many marriages gen is what kind so generous okay so what is uh gen so it is kind so that is generous is one of the word generosity also comes out and elio is sun so elio is what sun and heliograph is what so writing about a sun so heliotrophy we have heliocentric so our solar system is heliocentric so that's the thing we have so like this you people can see so some of the words so which we need to know 
it is very very important for you guys to understand so these prefixes roots and suffixes what it is so these prefixes roots and everything is very and also you know guys it will give us the understanding whether the word is positive or negative also for example see in im il ir so they're all not not in the sense what something negative so whatever the positive form is that its opposite is negative okay so therefore if at all if we have in im il or ir okay so what it is it is not so illegible so illegible means something which is not eligible irresolute so that means that cannot be solved that can be called as irresolute in action in action means something so not an action in violate violate is what you people are obstructing so in violate means it is not so all these things are what so basically so some opposite words that you people have here so judice judice is what judgment prejudice prejudice pre is narrow judice narrow judgment one who has this narrow judgment so we call them as what prejudice okay juven is what young this is the root okay juven is young juvenile is what someone someone who is very uh, young so and uh, that is called juvenile rejuvenate means what you are just energizing and you feel that youngness after exercising or after getting some treatment that is called rejuvenate that means so something we are making something to be uh, uh, something fresh like young okay so that's the thing we basically have labor work laborious that means the one who work very hard we call as laborious whereas belabor is the one who don't work so that is belabor log logo ology so what this means it's word study say speech reason so catalog prologue dialogue zoology logo so all these things are what related to the speech saying study reason all these things guys the first thing we want you people to do even before looking at this complete set because now i'll be showing what is that throughout this one week i show how many words you people need to work okay it is not like what is that if you study just 500 600 words you will be able to uh, get very good scores on your uh, gre verbal that cannot happen i'm clearly saying that really cannot happen why because we need to work on the words so kindly guys you people need to know all these meanings what nano means it's billion neo means new oct means eight over is excessive pan is all so we say pan india what does that pan india means it is found everywhere okay so that is the thing so we we need to th uh, this one pedo is child that is the reason we say so what is that uh, pedagog pediatrics and all okay so and um, quad or quad is for <laughs> you can see that so this we have given you the clippings of few of the roots prefixes and suffixes but guys we need you people to work on these things okay so the first step what we need to do we need to you people to work on all this this one what is that prefixes roots and suffixes this will be given in your handouts kindly go through don't make what is that an option to learn it it is very 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 important for you people to know all the prefixes i am using the word all the prefixes roots and suffixes whatever i am showcasing here it is not just that much we have we have many 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 prefixes roots and suffixes which is given to you guys yes sir. so you will be ashwin you will be getting the handouts ashwin don't worry about that okay 
So we'll be giving you the handouts on all the complete list. Whatever we are doing, we'll be presenting to you exclusively all these things. OK, so therefore, don't worry about that. But you need to see it's not the resources that you get but you need to work from your hand okay and i'm saying how important it is at least to guess the word meaning if you don't remember the word at least you can guess the meaning and you will get a kind of what is that confidence oh this word definitely is the meaning is this it can be positive word it can be negative word so at least you people can recognize that particular thing right so therefore kindly work on these things now after you work on this the easiest way to remember the things see now we people have so many students in our class we won't be remembering each one but in the family you people will have so so many people no matter how big the family is you people will remember the names of everyone right your cousins their cousins their this one so everyone you will remember the names why because you people have some kind of connection. You people have some kind of, what is that we can say, um, a clue or understanding. Whereas when you go to school or colleges, when you go to workplace and all, you remember your team. Your opposite team you will remember. But whether you people will remember everyone else in the office there? No, right? So especially if you're working in the big companies, in BPOs, IT, IT sectors and all, will you be able to remember everyone there? No. So we need to, in the same way, we cannot just, what is that? Uh, even if you read through all the words, suddenly remembering the words is not possible. And also, as I said, when we are doing sentence equivalence and sentence uh, uh, text completion, we need to know the string of synonym words. Why? You won't get that exact word. We need to recognize, oh, synonym word we need to pick. So to have that particular thing, to have that uh, the expertise, OK? What we have come across is family words. So what we have done here is that, so we basically have grouped the words with similar meaning, OK? What we, we are doing. So we are trying to, what is that, use it, uh, have the similar words, and we are trying to uh, keep them under one thing. So that if you know, see, criticize or criticism, so what all we have in criticize or criticism? So aspersion is there, belittle is there, berate, uh, berate is there, calumny, calumny is there, castigate, chastise, decry, defamation, deride or derisive or derogate. Now, even though you you will not be knowing the perfect meaning, but at least you know that all these means what you are trying to. Mm, uh, this one, what is that? Blame someone, you're trying to uh, say something, uh, you're finding fault in someone, you're trying to, uh, like, what is that? Uh, identify some faults in someone, okay? That is the criticism, isn't it? So if you two, three times go through it, immediately when you see the word, don't you think you will say that, yes, criticism, this word is criticizing someone. That means in our general local language so these things otherwise don't you think guys you will you many of you would have not seen many of these words only isn't it and therefore to when we do the things in group we remember it quickly so that is the reason under criticism so these are the words that we can have what are those aspersion be little berate, calumny, castigate, chastise, decry, defamation, deride, derisive, derogate. That means all these are negative act, right? Negative words. So as soon as you come across these words, so you can identify, oh, this is negative words. Why? Because it belongs to criticism are criticizing so that's the reason so it is like what is that negative words 
Now, falsehood. Falsehood is also what? A negative word here. So if it is negative word, so what, what are the different words that can come under this? All these things leads to this idea only. Okay. Apocryphal, dissemble, duplicity, equivocate, equivocation, erroneous, so assets, fallacious, gile, and mendacious. Can you see here? Like all these are what falsehood. Something not good, something not uh, in a good direction. It is all done to have a self, uh, this one, what is that uh, advantage? OK, so I'll repeat the words here. Apocryphal, dissemble, duplic duplicity, equivocate, equivocation, erroneous, estag. Er Hersats, so fallacious, gile, and mendacious. Okay. Now, annoy. Annoying is what? Irritating, isn't it? Irritating someone, making someone angry. That uh, making, uh, if we are getting angry on something, so all those things is what? Annoy. So, annoy, what are the words, different words we can say that come under this family? So, it's aggravate. Irk, irritate, perturb, vexing, beginner, inexperience, acolyte, so credulous, gullible, and naive. So all these things comes under annoy. Okay. Now foul. Foul is what? Again, something fishy. Okay. Foul is fishy, not good. We we are getting foul smell, we say. That means something which is not acceptable, which is very, very bad. Okay, that is foul. Okay, so that, uh, uh, okay, so uh, foul, festering, so festering, fetid, fulsome, invidious, noisome, difficult to understand, abstruse, arcane, enigmatic, esoteric. Okay, what are the things that we have? So we have. So these are the words that we have. Okay. So festering, fetid, so fulsome, invidious, so and noisome, difficult to understand, abstruse, arcane, enigmatic, esoteric. Okay. So these are some of the words that describes this Paul. Okay. And then debutary. So that means what? Depraved deprived of something so we can say debutory so bachanalian carousel deprived dissipated iniquity libertine libidinous licentious so and reprobate and this one praise is what praising so praising or appreciating so we can take acclaud aggrandize encomium eulogize extol loud, laudatory, venerate, or veneration. All these are words that appreciate or that talks about your praising. See, why we are grouping these words? See, if you people go through these words, don't you think even two, three times you go through this word, suddenly I say, if you find venerate or veneration, at least you remember that that word means what? Praising. Enough. But otherwise, if you people separately study these words or read these words and even you mug up, okay, if I want to use, if I have some group of words and from that I need to pick up the word that means praise, so do you think you will be able to pick up them? It will become a little difficult, isn't it? So therefore, these family words kindly concentrate immediately after you are done with your what is that prefixes suffixes and roots so we want you to work on this particular things now see these are some of the whatever the family words we have given you so they're all very what is that regularly used words 
that is the reason we have researched taken it extracted it and we are giving you here okay and every even a simple word is very important in the exam when it comes to text completion and sentence equivalence it's not that always they give the high frequency words you will have the options of a uh, simple words okay when you have the options of simple words also you you should know that meaning of those simple words many times we may end up not recognizing the simple words meaning also okay something that changes quickly like sometimes we only we change our mind very quickly right so sometimes for a second we'll say oh no today i'll attend the class then because you will be tired for the day you'll say no matter however i'll get the recording now i'll attend tomorrow this kind of nature that means sometime you want to sometime you don't want to so what is that nature that's mercurial okay you are not what is that having that uh, stable thinking so that's mercurial or something which changes frequently okay so very quickly our mind change our mind is mercurial okay we need to have control on it so we can, you would have heard about that mercurial means padarosa mercury isn't it mercury is very what is that it won't stay it will keep on in movement okay so therefore that's the reason we have extracted that word mercurial capricious volatile okay poor destitute so indigent impecunious withdrawal retrains abeyance okay so so some of words are there then truth is what candor candid filthy frankness indisputable indeptable probity sincere veracious verity biting is what something caustic okay so caustic we call it as caustic in the sense our words if it tends to be very rude okay if our words tend to become very rude or very this one that we call as acerbic acidulous acrimonious uh, asperity caustic mordant mordacious trenchant getting it so that is something kind of very irritating, biting our words, our statements will be very hurting. So uh, when we speak with that hatredness, okay, so that situation is called biting. Weakening. What do we mean by weakening? Uh, we are breaking the strength. We are making someone weak. So, what are the different words that we have? Adulterate, enervate, inhibit, obviate, stultify, undermine, vitiate. Okay, all these belongs to this weakening process. In some or the other process, we are trying to weaken the same thing. Then harmful. Harmful also is very common word, right? But look at the words you people can see here. Don't you think that all these words not very commonly used? In fact, you people are preparing for GRE. Obviously, you come across these words. Baleful, baneful, deleterious, in, uh, inimical, injurious, insidious, minatory, per perfidious, and pernicious. Okay, and timid is what? Someone who is shy and scared craven diffident so uh this one's uh, salanimous uh, then recreant timorous uh, and trepidation so all these things are what someone who is very shy uh scared uh, so that kind of fearful so that uh, person we call it as timid now stubborn how many of you are all stubborn stubborn means what so if you have if we pick something we need to do just like that only now you people should be stubborn in your thought process what you people are planning to give the test gre test and you need to give the gre test and come out with flying colors okay so that's the thing here we have so stubborn stubborn means what what are the different forms that we can use so implacable in 
deplorable, intractable, intransigent, obdurant, obstinate, pertinacious, recalcitrant, refractory, retinent, untold. So these things. And beginning or young, it is burgeoning, something uh, like which is just starting off, which is ma uh, not mature. So it could be burgeoning, callow, engined, uh, then incohate, incipient, nascent. So all these things we have. Okay. Now, overblown or wordy. The one who is just overblown. Right now, I am just overblown or worthy because I am describing the words. I need to be worthy here, isn't it? So that means bombastic, circumlocation, garrulous, grandiloquent, loquacious, periphrastic, prolix, turgid, verbose. All these things says what? The one who is over speaking or uh, just using a very decorative language embell embellished language if somebody using if they are using many words to explain something so th all those things comes under this overblown wordy or uh, this one okay so you can see a uh, bombastic circumulation uh see it's not talkative uh, paul so it is basically you are trying to be what uh, uh, like uh, we say now, pompous. We are trying to say that, oh, this was like this, this was like that. A too phrasy kind of thing will be uh, talking. Na? So that is your overblown of body, like bombastic. So a circumlocution. That means you don't come to the point directly. So you just go around, go around and come. So yeah, in that garrulous means talkative. Talk at you what? It is more than talk at you. You're just trying to tell uh, one thing in many ways. Okay. Grandiloquent. So that means your words are very embellished, loquacious, periphrastic, prolif, so turgid, so and verbose. All these things means the same here. Now, now hostile. So all style is what? Adjusting to yourself. So that is antithetic, churlish, so curmudgeon, so irascible, so malvomant, misanthropic, truculent, vindictive, and something boring, so banal. Yeah, studying on words is not a piece of cake. It could be banal. But however, you people have to create interest in it. I'll tell. So I'll start talking about minomics also where you people can uh, relate the word with something so that you people can remember the meaning okay that process uh, so we call it as uh, so minomics will be doing minomics also but before that yes uh, boring banal clished so features acne in speed so mundane pedestrian platitude prosaic so curtain so and tried all these things something boring common uh, very commonly present uh, so uh, that's called boring okay terse is what to the point so terse is what to the point so therefore compendious it is curt laconic pithy so uh, then uh, uh, this one taciturn or uh, second so all these things means what just there assisting is what so you people know assisting someone abet advocate so ancillaries uh, assisting means supporting so that is a giving and helping and so all those things comes under assist so bolster corroborate countenance espouse mainstay munificent proponent style what sustenance so all these things greedy means what just to self -centered. more than self-centered we need everything okay that's greedy Avaricious, covetous, mercenary, miserly, penurious, venal. So all these things come. So see, so many times you people would have seen these words in your reading comprehensions and the short passages. At that point of time, you may not worry or like you may not be getting the uh, meaning. So, but yes, now once you start preparing for the words, you people will be getting to know what these words are. Satisfy. 
so is nothing but ameliorate, appease, assuage, defer, mitigate, mollify, pacify, placate, prop propitiate, satiate, slack. That means we are satisfying. We are satisfying our hunger. We are satisfying someone's need. We are satisfying. We are making the pain to uh, reduce. All these things comes under this thing. Okay. So like this, guys, basically, we need to work on what? Family words. Today we have discussed about family words. We have discussed about roots, prefixes, and suffixes. Okay. So now it is in your ball is in your court. Now you people need to give that complete what is that uh, uh, importance, and you people need to work on these things. Okay. Tomorrow I'll be talking about transition words and one word substitutions. Right. As I said. This week, we are only talking about what? Words. And whatever we instruct you. So you need to do that. Why? By doing that, you will be seeing that your word knowledge will increase. Your grasping skill will increase. And not only that, you will not be mugging up, but still you will be knowing the words there. Okay? So now tell me, guys, what, uh, like... Uh, see, pedestrian means a person walking on the street. Yeah, but however, pedestrian is something, some topic which is very common, which is not very difficult to understand, but very boring it is. Okay, so we use that pedestrian word there. So, ma'am, uh, is encouraging same as assisting? Yeah, to some extent, we are encouraging in the sense what we are basically right, encouraging. Can you please uh, mute yourselves? So, uh, here what we are doing. In a way, we are trying to assist you, right? We are assisting you by motivating you. That is, you are encouraging. Uh, yes, Ashwin, you will be getting the handouts from our moderators. They will be giving you this and which will be found in your portals. Okay. And uh, yes, where can we get? Yeah, Karthik, the same answer for you as well. Now, this is only what is that? It is not knowledge based. It is just you need to have that. Uh, what is that? Patience to take the words. Okay. Patience. And you need to have that. What is that? A kind of uh, sitting and at least spending one to two hours on the words. Here, I would like to give one tip for you guys. Take up these things, different words, and in fact, whatever we'll be telling the different list and all, we want you to work on them regularly. So as you start your day, that means when you, uh, like, what is that, uh, wake up. So the first thing that you can do is you can go through the words. You can set in one day, one set of words you will be doing, OK? And while you're asleep, before you go to sleep, so take the words and start doing. Why? Because both are the times where, like immediately, see, in the morning, your mind will be fresh, so you will grasp in everything. In the evening, when you, after studying, if you go for sleep, at least those words and those things will be in your subconscious mind. Don't just do that. Then whatever the words you have taken, so those words start using in your regular uh, daily life okay at least you try to uh, uh, use it okay so when you use it you remember its practical uh, usage once you practically use you remember the word that means the words which are in the subconscious mind comes into the active form and now tomorrow when you are doing another list before doing another list you just uh, try to revise whatever you did the previous day then you go for the next new set. What happens? Double time you would have seen the words. Third day, revise both the day's words and go for the third. So this regular revision makes you to remember what is the word, what is the meaning, what are the different synonyms, what are the different antonyms. All these things you will start remembering. And also one more thing, guys. When you are doing reading practice, or critical reasoning, or whenever you go anywhere, if you find a new word, please maintain one uh, word general where write that word, Google out, you will get all the synonyms, you will get all this 
antonyms. That is also one of the way, practical way, where you will be having or you will start including many words in your dictionary there okay these kind of self start is very required if you want to have extremely good command over words okay ashwin depend